Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Andrea and I'm here with only the second update for my own project, Paranormal Pantivity. This is a project I created in collaboration with the Fantastic Ladies Facebook group and it's all about spooks, specters, and spirits because I love paranormal supernatural stuff and I was really inspired by the Nightmare on Panning Street and this is Pantasy Project Pans to create this because I just love, love this stuff. So there's 31 prompts. It started on September 24th, which was the last Saturday of the month this year. And the last Saturday of September is National Ghost Hunting Day. It runs through the 24th of September, 2023. I am really, really open with however you want to do this. Monthly updates, bi-monthly updates. If you're like me and you skip three, that's fine. Do it rolling style, bring everything in all at once, however you want to do it. I don't care as long as you're having fun. So I've already finished, I believe, three prompts. And because it's been such a long time since I updated. And so now it's January and this is only my second update. So I've got a lot to roll out. And I do like, well, I do, I say it like I do it all the time. I've only done one update, but I do try to like kind of explain the prompts a little bit more when I roll things out. I am nowhere on Shelly's level of research and explaining things. Like this is gonna be a super brief overview of some of the prompts. So please don't come here looking for a thesis because you're not gonna get it. <laughs> so let's jump right in and start out with Doppelganger, a product you have a double backup of. I have two of these NYX, the marshmallow primers, like they sent me two on accident. I only, I only wanted one and they sent me two. So I've been working on this to finish, obviously. I've used it six times. There's still, a, there's still quite a bit in here. I don't know how I feel about it. Like it's not primer wise, it's not bad, but it's so sweet smelling like cotton candy and I do not like, I love cotton candy. I do not like the scent of cotton candy like the fake artificial cotton candy scent Ugh, I hate it and that's what this smells like to me so I uh I will finish it I will finish up the other one I have but I don't think this is something that I will purchase a full size of the next item I was working on was for white lady a product that's white or with white packaging and I have this Dermalogica Daily Microfoliant. This is four grams and I used it 12 times and this is done. I thought this was going to take way longer than it did, but I, maybe I used too much, but if I, I had a hard time with this only because I had a hard time getting the right amount of product and the right amount of water together because too little water and it doesn't, it doesn't turn into enough of a paste where you can actually like put it on your skin, too much water, and it like rinses all the little microfoliating beads away. So mm, probably not something I would purchase a full size of, but I was happy to use it. So this is an empty, and this is the first prompt that I'm going to talk about. So a white lady is, as you might be able to tell by the name of the ghost, a female ghost. She's usually dressed in white. Shocking. I know. Or like a white dress or like a long white nightgown or just a long flowy white garment of some sort. She's usually associated more with rural areas as opposed to like suburban or urban areas. And she's usually connected to a local legend of tragedy whether it be an accidental death or a murder or a suicide surrounding the loss of a loved one, betrayal by a man, I'm sure everyone is shocked by that one, or unrequited love. One of the more famous white ladies is rumored to haunt Newstead Abbey where the poet Lord Byron lived and she's She's supposedly the daughter of a local bookseller who was obsessed with Lord Byron. I don't know how she died, but she's a ghost now, and I guess she can't move on because of her love for him. In many countries, the White Lady is seen as a death omen, or at the very least, a harbinger of misfortune. And probably the most 
common white lady you see in the horror tropes currently are the ones from Japan, like Samara for, from The Ring, or I can't remember her name, but the the character from Juan or The Grudge, where they have the long black hair and they're wearing a white dress, like nightgown dress type situation. So those those ghosts are the Japanese version of White Lady. So that's probably the most the most common, well known one right version right now. I would say, in my opinion, according to me. So that is the White Lady. Next, we have Bloody Mary, a product with a mirror. I picked my Tarte Park Avenue Princess palette, and I wanted to use oof. I want to use each of these like setting finishing powders 10 times each and then each bronzer five times each. Let's see. On Halo, I've got eight uses enhance. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time I hear the word enhance. So my husband works in IT. This is a total tangent, by the way. Just FYI. My husband works in IT and one of his biggest pet peeves is those shows or in movies when they're working with computers and they... <laughs> And they need to see something super up close, so they just say enhance, and it turns into like this perfect crystal clear image, super up close. You know, that's not that's not how it works, not at all. But so that's what that's what I think of whenever I see the word enhance, enhance. Every time we watch a movie and there's something like that in there, we both look at each other and we both say it just like that. Enhance has nothing to do with paranormal, but I just thought it was funny. Okay, and then I've used. With the exception of Carrot, this one, which I've used four times, I have gotten my five uses on all the rest of these bronzers. I'm actually wearing Angle today. I think it looks pretty. I like Princess Cut a lot because it is the coolest of the four. It's much more of a contour -y shade, but I like all of them. Deb sent this to me, and I'm super grateful, and I'm really liking it. So I, I would anticipate that this will be done, or this prompt will be done next month. Because I only need two more uses on Halo, four more on Enhance, and only one more on Carrot. So I think I can get that done pretty easily. The next prompt I was still working on is for Screaming Skulls, a Halloween or scary, spooky themed product. For that, I have my Nomad Cosmetics Haunted Europe palette. I just love... Like, I like this palette a lot. Like, the color story, the shadows work very nicely. But, I mean, let's be honest. I really got it for the packaging because how freaking cool is that? I love it. So, <clears throat> as with pretty much every eyeshadow in this project, this is No Pan Left Behind. I used it once, I think one more time in the past three, two or three months. So... I'm holding it upside down. This is making it way more difficult on myself than it needs to be. I've used these two, this one, this one, and this one as well as everything over here with the exception of this. So I've, I've got eight shades left in the palette and this is an 18 pan palette. So because I have almost all of the palettes in here for no pan left behind and it's a year long project, like I'm not rushing obviously, to hit my goals on all these palettes right away because I like to have a lot of variety when I do my makeup. And if it takes me, you know, six months to hit every pan in this palette, that's fine with me. It's, I'm still using it. So I've, st I'm not going to say like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to have this no pan left behind done for next month. I could, I probably won't, but I could. Next is Banshee, a product you are close to finishing. That's this ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lip in Hot Headed. It was part of their Villains collection. I've got nine uses on it. I started over here. I'm down here. I just, it's a brush tip. I really, I hate, I hate, hate, hate the brush tips. And this is quite like a thick, gloopy gloss. So I have to be careful when I do use it. I mean, I do think I will finish it this year in this project. It's just, I'm not reaching for it a ton because it is kind of a pain in the butt to use. Number nine is Dybbuk, a product still in its box. And I brought in my Melt Amorti Mariposas eyeshadow palette 
for No Pan Left Behind, obviously, because everything is No Pan Left Behind. So this is what it looks like. The last update I had use on all of the greens. I am wearing this on my eyes today. So I, and this is the only other time I've used it. So I've got, let's see, Senales in my transition. I have Mensaje in my crease. I have Abrazos in my outer corner. I have Mesquite tapped over like most of the middle of my lid. And then I'm wearing my loose Tammy Tanuka pigment that I have in Throwback 30 on like the inner part. But that is my second use. So I haven't even touched half of the shades in this palette yet, but that's okay. Like I said, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And I've got lots of different palettes in for no pan left behind. And I'm just, everything gets a turn. I don't like focus on one palette until I use every shadow and then move to the next one. I like, I like to rotate because I get very bored very easily. Next, Kelpie is a product you use in the shower or bath. I have um, a bar of soap for that, but I haven't started using it yet. Next is Bogey, AKA Bogeyman or Boogeyman, a product you use at night. I was working on my It Bye Bye Makeup 3-in-1 Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. I got 43 uses on it and this is done. This packaging is kind of, I feel like it's kind of deceiving. Like I feel, it's just a lot of wasted packaging. It is, how much is this? This is only a 2.82 ounce thing. I thought it was bigger for some reason. That's what she said. So um, I got this at TJ Maxx or Marshalls or something. This is not, especially having used it, this is not something that I would pay full price for. And it's probably not something I would pick up again if I saw it there. It was nice to try, but it's, no, I don't, I don't need, I don't need this particular one in my life. It did just what everything else does and it's expensive and you just don't get it as much as I thought you did. So that one is an empty. So the bogey, AKA bogeyman, or as probably most of us know it, the boogeyman, it's an entity that comes from British folklore. They're a class of evil spirits or hobgoblins. It's the, the book that I have says that they either work like alone or in groups, but in my you know, in my experience with boogeymen in as part of American culture, it they're like lone, they're lone creatures. I've never read or a story or seen a book or watched a show or anything that featured boogeymen that had them like in groups. It's always one singular boogeyman terrorizing people. Um, they they have many different names, including obviously the bogeyman and the boogeyman, but the bugaboo, which I didn't know, a bugbear, a bogart, which you will probably recognize from Harry Potter, and bogey beast. Obviously, Harry Potter did not coin the term bogart. I just mean that they, she, I just mean that J.K. Rowling, you know, used that term for one of the creatures in Harry Potter. They're usually described as very large humanoid creatures that are black in color, just like big shadowy black humanoid figures with claws, talons, and sharp teeth. They mostly appear at night and they are, their main, their main um, goal, I guess, is to frighten kids and that is the main, that is where you see the boogeyman a lot as a threat to get children into behaving. <laughs> there, while I can't off the top of my head think of a ton or many stories or movies or any media that features boogeymen, there is one, Stephen King has a short story called The Boogeyman. It's in his it's in a short story collection called Night Shift. It is a really good story. And apparently it's being made into a movie and being released this June. So I'm really excited for that because that was a really good short story. So I'm, I'm interested to see if it's any good. But that's, I mean, that's the general gist of the boogeyman. They are big 
and scary, but mainly if you're a child. Otherwise, they kind of just leave you alone. For Demon, a product you were tempted into buying, I have this Urban Decay Naked Honey. I don't know why. I like it's super neutral. I mean, very yellow, obviously gold, mustardy. I do really, whoops. I love these colors. And they make my eyes look really blue when I wear them. I talked myself out of this several times because I'm like, it's more neutral. You don't really do neutrals. You have so many indie singles, blah, blah, blah. And it was on sale at Ulta for half off. And I was like, you know what? I, I want it. I'm just going to get it. So I bought it. And I brought it in for No Pain Left Behind. And I used it No Pain Left Behind. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I actually am very happy that I picked this up. Like, obviously, it's not something that I'll probably ever pan because I have way too much eyeshadow for that, but I'm happy to have it and it's really beautiful. So that prompt is done, which means we have another one to talk about, which is demon. So a demon is a spirit that may be good or evil, which probably you hear that and you're like, what are you talking about? Demons are like in line with Satan. Well, I don't know what to tell you. That's just what the book said. And they also have the ability to intervene in mankind's affairs. Usually different types of spirits and stuff they can't really they can't really influence or affect the events around them they're just kind of there but demons can actually cause things to happen if that makes sense I don't know if it does but I'm sure the majority, if not everybody, when they think of a demon, they think of the Christian idea of a demon, which is an evil minion of Satan. And their sole purpose is to tempt, tempt people and torment them and lead them into sin and straying away from God and that kind of thing. But the word demon actually comes from the Greek word daemon, D-A-I-M-O-N, and I may be mispronouncing that because I don't speak Greek, but it means replete with wisdom. So in the Greek culture, daemones were divine powers or fates or gods that were like spiritual guardians. So not totally the opposite of what we think of them as today. There's just so, so many examples of demons in media. Um, if you want to go totally old school, Dante's Inferno, which is actually, side note, I really like Inferno. Purgatorio was, eh, and I couldn't get through Paradiso because it was so freaking boring. Because you know what? You know what's boring? Hearing about how good and holy people are. You know what's interesting? Hearing about how people are just total assholes. So that's why Inferno is better. But there are, you know, in Dante's Inferno, there's levels of hell. There's different demons in each circle tormenting the lost, tormenting the souls that are held within that circle for their transgressions. So that's not the oldest example, obviously, but it's a pretty, a pretty well-known one, you know, I'm, and I'm not talking about things in the Bible, obviously that's older, but just, you know what I mean. And there's just so much, there's just so many examples of demons in popular media, like the evil dead, the deadites are demons. Um, the, <clears throat> the conjuring movies, Featuring Ed and Lorraine Warren. Uh, I don't want to get into them right now. <laughs> I have opinions, obviously. But those movies center around demons. And I mean, you know, like shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Supernatural all feature like, demons of the week and things like that. So they're, they're just everywhere in popular media. That's all I'm going to say about that. So for ectoplasm, it's a face mask. I have not started using that mask. And then we're going to our next, <laughs> our next uh, prompt that is finished. And that is for Ghost, a product with unfinished business. And I had brought in my Zulu palette by Juvia's Place because I had this in Pan Those Eyeshadows two years ago. The I had the middle shade in and I never hit pan. So I brought this in for No Pan Left Behind and to hit pan. 
And I did both, as you can see, there's a nice pan that only took me two more uses. So I'm kind of mad, like whenever this was in pan those eyeshadows, I didn't just tough it out and hit pan on it. But two more uses to hit pan in that. And then I did use everything one more time. I don't, I don't know. I like this palette. I think I'm going to have to pull it into another project again because it's been so long since I actually did hit my, I hit my goal on this back in November. Like I've, it's nice and I like it, but at the same time, I'm like, do I need it in my collection? Probably not. But also now that there's a pan in it, I like don't really want to donate it. So I don't know. But that one is not in this project any longer at any rate. So ghosts and like ghost is an extremely broad category. And this is going to be a very, very limited, limited information on it. A ghost is a spirit of the dead that generally makes itself known through noises, smells, cold spots, and moving objects. A lot of times when people think of ghosts, they think of like the full body apparition kind of thing. A, a ghost and an apparition. Apparitions are ghosts. Not all ghosts are apparitions. It's one of those deals. In general, ghosts are more likely to be incorporeal. You usually cannot see them, but they can manipulate the environment around them. As with any of these prompts, there's going to be almost an infinite number of variations on them throughout every culture, and I don't have time to, like, go through all of that. So the most basic is a ghost is a spirit who either doesn't realize that it has passed on or it doesn't realize that it, its body has passed on and it can move on into the afterlife. It's just kind of like stuck because they're confused. They don't know. They don't know that they're dead, basically. Or they have some form of unfinished business, usually because, you know, like they're a wrongful death, like they were murdered. They're trying to avenge their murder or have it get solved because it's usually an unsolved murder. Or they didn't have a chance to deliver some really important piece of information while they were alive. So they've stayed behind to make sure that information gets imparted upon the correct person. Or, you know, just sometimes to fuck around with people. Pardon my language, but sometimes just because they want to. Um, I believe I talked about this in my first update. The movie Poltergeist. Those aren't really poltergeists. Those are ghosts. So... That's a good example of a ghost. So that is that for ghost. Necromancy is a product you haven't used in a long time. I have my Urban Decay Born to Run palette. I've only used five shades out of this so far. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to wait until I do No Pan Left Behind on it, but I'm really thinking this might actually be a declutter. I don't, I just am not, I don't know. It's pretty. It's not like it's, an awful palette by any means. It's just for some reason I'm not super drawn to using these shades. So I'm not going to make a decision until I've used everything but this this may be going in a future declutter. Next for a Ouija board. It's really we I guess it technically really is a we ya board because it's we and ya the French and German words for yes, but we Americans, we like to butcher foreign languages. So it's a Ouija board. That is a product with embossing or an imprint. <clears throat> I have my BH Sweet Shop Pistachio palette because they have little waffle cone imprints on them. This is no pan left behind. I have used every shade except for this one. And honestly, it would have been really easy for me to just use the one last shade that I needed, but I was already like, I'm going to have so many rollouts whenever I finally film this video that I need to like, I need to pull it back a little bit. So I haven't used that one yet. Next is Urban Legend, a product that's too good to be true. I have the Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara because I've heard nothing but good things about this. I know sample sizes and full sizes are they can be different. So this was like, this was not the worst mascara I've ever tried by any means, but I also didn't really get the hype about it. So, but I got 34 uses out of it before I felt like it was getting like just too dried out to use. 
So that one is also empty. And then Urban Legends, as the prompt says, it's a story that's too good to be true. These are stories where there's like a running theme that you can find throughout many, many cultures. It doesn't have to be supernatural. Like the the old story of like if alligators being flushed down the toilets into the sewers in New York City and like just growing huge in the underground sewers in New York City. Like that's an urban legend. It's not a supernatural one, but there are there are quite a few supernatural urban legends though. One which I already talked about in my first update, the vanishing hitchhiker where, you know, you pick somebody up at the side of the road at nighttime and by the time you drive them to their destination, they're no longer in your vehicle. Then there's the weeping woman or as she's called in like Hispanic or Latinx countries, La Llorona, where she's usually crying over the loss of her children, either because she killed them or they died some other way, but she's like trying to find them, wandering the streets crying. She is also, by the way, another white lady ghost. Or the the hook and the dead boyfriend where the couple is in their car like making out and they're playing the radio, listening to the news apparently, <laughs> I don't know. And there's a news bulletin about an escaped inmate or an escaped mental patient or something along that nature who has a hook for a hand and all of that stuff ensues or the lost ship urban legend like the flying dutchman is a lost ship urban legend where the ship is reported to be lost and then you see like the phantom ship and there's many sightings of it so those are all examples of urban legends Next is Orbs, a product that brings light to your face. I have the Makeup Geek Psychedelic Duochrome Highlighter, which is, it might be hard to see because of my lighting, but it's what I'm wearing today. It's, it shifts like a peachy pink. You can't really see it in the pan. There, you can kind of see it on my finger. It's a very pretty highlighter. I really like it. My goal is 31 uses and I've got four. So mainly because I was really focusing on champagne pop and everything else gets kind of put to the wayside. Next for Seance, a product you bought because someone else told you to or recommended it. Where did it go? There it is. I have the lippy that I'm wearing right now, which is the Milani Color Fetish Balm Lipstick because Valerie really recommended it. And I got the shade Role Play because this is like my color. Why wouldn't I? So I also want to use this 31 times and I have six uses on this. Next, for flying, speaking of shipwrecks, lost shipwrecks, the Flying Dutchman, a product you are doomed to pan what feels like forever. I brought in a blush trio because blush takes forever to pan. And this is newer in my collection and I wanted to get use on it. It's the Tartlet Blush in Bloom palette. It's got three, three very beautiful blushes in here. I am wearing Tulip today. And I want to use each of these 10 times. So far, I have worn Petunia 4, Wild Rose 4, and Tulip 3. So I still got a ways to go on this one. Next, for Afterlife, a product past its expiration date. This is the foundation I'm wearing today. This is my ColourPop No Filter Foundation in Light 55. I don't... It got all kind of shooken up. So I don't know. I know I'm below this line because that's where I started. I want to use this 31 times and I've got, I've got 11 uses on it. So 20 more to go. I mean, I do, I like this foundation. It's, it's okay. I want to, I do want to finish it, but probably not this year because I'm trying to finish too many foundations, but 31 uses will put a good dent in it. So I still got 20 to go on that one. Then the last prop I'm rolling out, so I'm almost done, people, I swear, is Black Dog, and I, the prompt is an animal-themed product, and I picked my Clarity Cosmetics Cobra palette. This is what it looks like. It's insanely gorgeous. I love, like, these are just, <coughs> these are just my colors. 
So no pan left behind. There's, wait, are there eight or ten shades? No. There's only eight shades in here, so that wasn't hard. I'm not going to say it. I'll let you say it, though. So that is the last prompt that I'm actually rolling out this time. So a black dog is a large dog whose appearance is often taken as a death omen. The dog's eyes are usually described as glowing, like either yellow or if it's more of a d demonic black dog, red. And they're sometimes described as headless, but still have the glowing spots where its eyes should be. They're generally regarded as sinister and malevolent. I mean, obviously with the whole death omen thing. But there are a few specific black dogs who have more of a benevolent reputation. And I should, I should also say, like, black dog is a very generic term depending on where you are. And this is mainly in, like, Europe, mainly in Britain and Ireland and Wales and like that. Their different regions have different specific black dogs associated with them. So while most of them are generally seen as not good, there are a few that are seen as helpful or like kind of guardians. They help nighttime travelers stay on the right path or they protect them from danger. One example is the Gert dog in Somerset. Probably the most famous black dog in popular culture is actually from Harry Potter as well, Padfoot, which is another name for the black dog in the UK. Obviously in Harry Potter, Padfoot ended up being like a good dog, <laughs> for lack of a better term, but it's, it's where that name came from in myth and folklore. Okay, so that is the last prompt that I have to explain today. So then 23, Domovic, a household spirit, a product that's followed you from house to house. I have this Deborah Lippman nail polish in Mermaid's Dream. I want to use it five times. I've only used it once. 24 is exorcism, an item you want out of your collection. This is the Becca Ignite Liquefied Light Highlighter in... Oh, the shade is Ignite. I don't know why I bought this. I definitely don't want it in my collection. I have a 31 use goal on it and I've used it 23 times. I mix it with foundation. I think I'm only about here. This is going to take me forever to finish. Like that's why I didn't put it in this project to finish. Oh my God. I just, it is not my favorite. Well, let me just tell you that. But I am wearing it mixed in with my foundation today because I need to use it on it. So there is that one. Next, for haunting, dupe a product that haunts you or pan a product you regret buying. Do I regret buying this? I don't know why I put this in because I definitely don't regret buying it. Maybe I regret buying it because I bought it and then I never used it. Maybe that was it. It's the BH Cosmetics Lunar New Year 2022 edit because like I'm pretty sure I put it in. I regret buying it because I kind of had like at the end of 2021, I had a binge shopping binge and bought a ton of makeup and never used most of it. I think that's why I brought it in. Not because I regret having it, but I regret buying it because it was kind of like, oh, I just buy it because. But anyway, bring it in for no pain left behind. And I do, I do not regret having this. This is a nice palette. I've used, let's see, this shade right here called Bling is gorgeous. It's like, orangey and kind of peachy but it's got like this green gold kind of shimmery flip to it it's beautiful I wore that one once I loved it I've worn this gold right here all of these mattes and then the black so this is whoops this one this white one is like I've used it a couple times as my inner corner shade and that's basically what it's good for is an inner corner shade but so far I've only used seven and there's 21 shades but so far I'm really I'm really liking this palette. Next Tommy Knocker a spirit that lives and works in mines a product named after a metal or a metallic product. I have my Becca rose gold highlighter. I have a 31 use goal on this. I've only used it three times so far. Reincarnation a product you bought in the past that has updated packaging. That's my 
Macadamia Professional Nourishing Hair Mask. I have not started that one yet because I have not finished the one in Throwback 30 yet. Then Revenant, an item that has come back into your collection, something you repurchased. This is the Pacifica Pore Warrior Soft Scrub. I've repurchased this several times. I've got 27 uses on it. This is almost done. Like I held it up to the light and I'm like, I've got about that much left. So this will be done for next month. Then for Silkies, Female Spirits Dressed in Silk, a product with a silky texture like a powder or something that leaves your skin feeling silky smooth like lotion or skincare. I brought in my Tatcha The Silk Powder to finish. I use this to set my under eyes most days and I've got 70 uses on it. And I, like, like a fool, I did not mark it at the beginning and I didn't weigh it because I don't weigh things. So I have no idea how full it was when I started, but as you can see, I'm like down there. I'm, I mean, I, I definitely use it because I feel like earlier it was up at this writing and now it's down here. So this is, I mean, I only use it for my under, my under eyes and like maybe around my nose and like right here. Like I don't use a lot of this when I use it, so it's going to stay around for a while. Then for Spirit, a nature themed product, I picked my Beauty Bay Wilderness palette. And <clears throat> I have no idea which shades I've used since my first update, but I'll just show you everything that I've used. I've used this one, these two blues, these two greens. Wait, no. These two greens. This green and then the whole bottom row except for this red shimmer. So I've used half the shades in here, so I've still got half of them to go. But again, this is a really beautiful palette. Beauty Bay has a good formula and I'm really happy that I have this. And then lastly for Tower of London, a product that makes you lose your head either in delight or frustration. And I picked a palette full of indie singles that are just gorgeous. Beautiful. And I want to use all of them once. So far I've used Egypt from M Cosmetics, Fairy Fire from Davina. I've used this one several times actually. It is stunning. Like if you we're thinking about buying from Davina. Put this in your cart and you will thank me later. Then I've used Electric from Menagerie. I've used, this is Royal Pear. I think I took a picture of this look. I will pop it up if I took a picture of it. I used Electric with Royal Pear along with another palette that I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But like a green look, oh my god, this shadow is so freaking beautiful. It's chartreuse and pink and just... Like, can you even... Oh my god, I loved it. It was... I loved that look. It was so pretty. Then I've used Quest from Cleona. And finally, this is Rhododendron from Copacetic Cosmetics. This wasn't my favorite, not because of the color, but it's just more of a flaky formula and that's just not my jam. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that one, but I used it for this project. So that is it. 45 minutes later. I, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to edit this down guys. Sorry. So this may be a pretty long one. It is what it is. That's what happens when you don't update for three months. You got a lot to talk about, but that is it. If you still want to join this project, go ahead. I will leave links for the Fantastic Ladies and the sign up sheet down below so that you are welcome to join if you would wish. And I just hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. You are staying safe and sane and healthy and I will talk to you in the next one. Probably, hopefully not as long. <laughs> Bye.